It's a horrible shame to see the university descend into censorship and petty political correctness. Today, people rallied in support of Lindsay Shepard. She's the teaching assistant at the center of a controversy at Wilfrid Laurier University. Shepard says that she never considered herself an advocate for free speech until now. We'll hear from her in a moment, but first a look at how she was thrust into the spotlight. Shepard used clips of this debate from the public broadcaster TV Ontario about gender-neutral pronouns. It was part of a first-year communications class, and it included controversial University of Toronto professor Jordan Peterson. So and I don't so like I these made-up words, Z and Zer and that sort of thing. Okay, what about, they're not all made-up words, quote-unquote made-up yeah. words. For example, uh, they is one of them. Yeah, to, but we, to speak to an individual yes, as they. Right, but we can't dispense with the distinction between singular and plural. At least one student complained about Shepard's use of the video, and she was accused of violating the university's gendered and sexual violence policy. She met with her supervisor and another professor where, among other things, her use of the video was compared to airing Nazi propaganda. Well, this is like neutrally playing uh, a speech by, by Hitler or, or Milo Yiannopoulos from Gamergate. Shepard recorded the meeting and released the audio, and that's when this story became national news. On Tuesday, the school's president apologized to her, saying, the conversation I heard does not reflect the values and practices to which Laurier aspires. I'm sorry it occurred in the way it did, and I regret the impact it had on Lindsay Shepard. The university continues to investigate this, but that is not enough for some of the people who attended that rally today. Our Ron Charles heard from them and spoke to others who say their voices have been drowned out. On one side of the street next to Wilfrid Laurier University, the free speech rally in support of Lindsay Shepard. Attacks on freedom of speech need to get out of the classrooms of Laurier. On the other side, a line of silent counter-protesters who call the debate Shepard brought into her classroom an attack on their very existence. Without automatically coming to attack us. For Laurier student Milas Hewson, that existence needs to include being identified by the gender-neutral pronouns they and them instead of he or she. To have to be constantly on the defensive, um, defending our experiences, who we are as people, whether or not we are people in some cases, whether we exist, um, it's, it's very upsetting. Across the street, the free speech rally attendees counter that sometimes being upset by what's said is the price of academic freedom and learning about a diversity of views. It is clear to me that the culture of coddling and comforting students has gone too far. Yes. On this side of the street, Alex McEwen is one lone transgender student who came out in support of Shepard. And we need to use that free speech to show other people and discuss openly with them, respectfully. I also belong in this society as much as you do, and we can come to an agreement or agree to disagree. But today, the two sides remained separated by the chasm of a busy street. Ron Charles, CBC News, Waterloo, Ontario. And Lindsay Shepard joins us now. It's been a couple of weeks since this story broke. How's it been for you? It's been really overwhelming, but all of it has been worth it. And so a lot of people want to claim you as theirs, as, uh, you know, support for their point of view. You were saying to me earlier, though, you don't want to see this as a, as a left-wing or right-wing issue. How should we look at this? We should see it as freedom of expression, um, whether on a campus or otherwise, is everyone's issue. And I don't think either side of a political spectrum should be able to claim it for themselves. When you made that decision as a teaching assistant, you're a master's student and you were teaching undergraduates to play this clip from TV Ontario, did you have any idea that it was going to turn into such a contentious thing? I didn't. Um, and you know, based on the discussion that we actually had in the class, it was so intelligent and reflective and mature that I was so surprised to know that actually someone had a serious problem with it. So, so somebody, at least one person in that classroom, complained to the university saying you'd violated uh, the, the policies at that university. What do you know about the accuser and the accusation? I know absolutely nothing. So I don't know how many people complained. I don't know if it's something specific that, that I said or something that was in the clip or something maybe that even someone in the class said. Um, and you know, and currently, the Rainbow Center at Wilfrid Laurier University is demanding an apology um, from me. But first, I feel like I need to know 
what am I apologizing for? What, what, so, I mean, you've obviously had a lot of time to think about it. What, what do you think that they want you to apologize for? I think it's just the fact that a figure, Jordan Peterson, was in the clip, and it's by proxy of me bringing that figure into the classroom. Um, even though, obviously, all of us have different aspects of us that are maybe things that some people agree with and some people don't. So, you know, to think that one person is just polarizing no matter what and he has to be banned from the classroom, it's just a little bit outrageous to me. So you made the decision to tape the meeting that you had with a professor and someone else who, who was on the faculty. And, and that really is what has created so much attention here because it, it is a, a remarkable, what, 45 minute meeting to, to, to listen to. Um, and in that meeting, you were accused of a lot of things, including violating the, the Canadian human rights code. You, you kind of stood your ground. It was emotional at times in, in there. And now the university has apologized to you. How do you feel about the apology? So I do appreciate their apology, but at the same time, they were on a route to self-destruction and their, their only option was to apologize. And, you know, unfortunately the apology, although it's a, a step in the right direction, they were kind of making it seem that this was an issue of TA training or mentorship or like maybe I hadn't been trained properly, when really that's such a distraction from the real issue which is that this was, you know, a 42-minute meeting based on them telling me that I'm not allowed to let students have certain views. And it's just suppression. It's just silencing. You're a master's student in your early 20s. What is the lesson here for instructors and professors at universities across the country, do you think? It's that people really care about freedom of expression and freedom of speech, and people don't want to be told what to think and they want to be able to come to their own conclusions. They want to be able to critically think. And especially students who are, in a, who are in a university and this is their time for personal and intellectual development and we should let them figure out their own way. All right, Lindsay Shepard, thank you very much. Thank you. As we've mentioned, Laurier is not alone. Some argue that at many universities, it has become increasingly difficult for certain viewpoints to be heard at all. Jordan Peterson in particular has been a divisive figure, shouted down by protesters at McMaster University. It was about 100 people and there were only about three Aboriginal, well, there's a shock. Someone pulled there's the fire a alarm when shock. he and Rebel Media founder Ezra Levant spoke at the University of Toronto. Laurier cancelled an appearance by Danielle Robitaille, one of the lawyers who represented Gian Gomeshi. A student group said her presence would be threatening for sexual assault survivors and they intended to disrupt the speech. This is going to be a real anti-climax. Um, I had thought... At Middlebury College in Vermont, students turned their backs on controversial author Charles Murray, later drowning out the planned debate. And this is what happened in California when a Berkeley student group invited alt-right figure Milo Yiannopoulos to speak. But there is pushback, and it too is controversial. The University of Chicago now warning freshmen that they'll hear debates and viewpoints that may challenge them and even cause discomfort, adding the school does not support, quote, so-called trigger warnings and safe spaces. 